So this is honors higher algebra, and we are talking about properties of exponents, and it's not just going to be these ones that we started with, but I hope you know this one. Anything to the zero power is one. Raise your hand if you had one. Awesome. Now, I know some people are like, why isn't it zero? Let me explain it quick. If I said seven to the second power, you'd all know that means seven times seven is 49, right? What if I said seven to the first power? You'd all know that that was just seven, right? What if I go seven to the zero power? Now think about this. The reason it shouldn't be zero is because do you get if you divide this by seven, you get seven? If you divide this by seven, you should get a one. See how that works? That's why it's one. All right, so back to anything to the zero is one. A to the one is just A. A to the negative one is one over A. How many of you knew that one? Raise your hand if you did. Not that many, but that was most of you, more than half. All right, what is that again? Any negative power is like saying, hey, flip it over. So if I said nine to the negative one, it's saying, hey, flip it over. One over nine. Do you get that? To a negative one power means flip it over. Okay, next one. This one, I think the best way to do it is to write out what it means. Would you agree A to the third means A, A, A? That's what that means, right? Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to square it. Now, if you look at that, there's no way for you to think that the answer is 5. Now that you see A, A, A squared, you know that means times itself, right? There'd be no logical way that could be 5. That has to be 6. Now, I know you could just know that it's multiply, and then the answer is A to the 6th. But I'm trying to show you when you forget, and you're like, I can't remember if it's multiply or add, write out what it means like this. And then the answer becomes obvious. That's A to the 6th. All right, this kind, write out what it means. This means A, 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 and this means A, A. You're not going to look at that and think 6. You're going to look at that and think A to the 5th. The next one. This kind, you subtract the top minus the bottom, so that's 3 minus 2, which is 1. But when these get confusing, just do this. This means A, A, A. This means A, A. And do you get two of them cancel? And you're left with just A, which is the same as A to the 1. All right. And the last one, the hardest one, A to the 1 half. What in the heck does that mean? Who knew it was the square root of A? Ooh, only a couple of you. Nice job. Okay. So, that means square root of. So, if I say 9 to the 1 half power, what does that mean? Square root of 9, which is what? 3. That's what that means. Square root. Okay. Okay. Let's get into this a little further. Uh, this is the same exact thing, except they used like 3s and 5s. So it's, it's worth us, like, looking into this. 3 to the 4th means 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. And 3 to the 1 is just 3. And that makes 3 to the 5th. And you could have done that by putting the powers together in an add. But they also are asking you to do the exploded view. I think it's a good idea. Except when they get to be, like, 5 to the 27th power. You don't want to write 27 fives. you got to kind of get the idea. And on, that's what I'd do on this one. I'd be like, I'm not going to write out four fives and five fives. I'm just going to put A to the ninth because I know that's what it would be. Oh, thank you. That's a five, not an A. I did all mine with A's, but this is a five. All right. And then this one, I'm not going to write out seven times seven and then seven six times. That's dumb. I'm just going to put seven to the what? Eighth. All right. So what if it's x to the m times x to the n? Ew. Would you agree that the answer is x to a power? Then the only question is, what power? What do you think? Uh, x to the m plus n. Yep, you add the powers. On this kind, you add them. So m plus n, or the other way around. n plus m, or m plus n. You'd add the powers. All right, move on to the next page. Uh, we already talked about all of those, so go to the next page. We talked about all of those, except, yeah, they don't do negative powers yet. I want to talk about that for a second, though. Let's say I had six 
to the third over six to the fourth. That starts messing with your head because you know you're supposed to subtract them. But is the answer just six to the one? No, no it's not. It's six to the what? Negative. And if you remember what I said about that, you'd know the answer. One sixth, there you go. Now, could you have written that out as six times six times six over six times six times six times six? Yeah, and you would have had cancel, cancel, cancel. There's still one six left on the bottom and you put a one on top, one sixth. Really what happened is as you canceled all of those, they all had a one. They were all reducing to one. Technically, highest level math teachers don't like the word cancel. They liked you to say reduce because you're reducing this to one over one. That's what you're really doing is reducing it, not canceling it. All right, so anyway, the final answer for that one is like that. So this bears like doing, do you get some kids think we'd take the two and then we square it and we take the five and we put it to the third, but there's a smarter way. What do you do first? Yeah, two times five is 10 and then you do 10 to the third. Now, let's just think about that for a second. Is 10 to the third the same as if we had done 2 to the third times 5 to the third? Is that the same? Well, I'm not sure yet until I actually do it. What is 2 to the third? It's 8. What is 5 to the third? 125. The question is, is that the same as 10 to the third? Well, what's 10 to the third? thousand is that the same as eight times 125 yes. mm, interesting so you could do it that way now what's the fast way well fast way is definitely to make it 10 and 10 to the third boom done faster but they would come out to the same answer if you cubed them both all right so again fast way slow way well fast way is six times three is 18 18 to the fourth i do not expect you to know that off the top of your head I'd grab a calculator. All right, moving on. Let's go to this one. This is where we make it more generic, like there's letters all over the place. So what do we mean for these answers? Well, it's A to the something that involves M and N. Do you think it's M times N or M plus N? Plus. If you're ever struggling on this, make it into real numbers. Make it like five to the second and five to, or sorry, five to the M and five to the N and you'd go, okay, on this kind, I think I add them. So then the power must be that. On this kind, what do you do to the powers? Subtract, Subtract them, but it matters what order. M minus N? Yep. yep. If you did it backwards, you'd have a negative power and it wouldn't be the same. Just like 2 minus 5 isn't the same as 5 minus 2. They're different. All right. Here's one. Everybody find this one. It's problem 4. Tell me what you think that answer is. X to the something and Y to the something. Don't say it. Find it. And then compare it with the kid next to you. Pause. You try problem 4 here. Focus on this one right now. You should have said X to the, and on this kind, if you're struggling, bring it out and go X to the fourth to the third. You know what I mean? Like that's really what I got to do. And then go, that really means X, 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 X to the third. What do you think that is? X to the what? Twelfth. And the other one's y to the 15th. Raise your hand if you had that one right. Okay, cool. Powers are a big deal. We do them all the time. Uh, I already talked about a to the 0. That's 1. I already talked about a to the negative n, except it was never an n. Would you please figure out what you think this one is? It's a to a power. Be careful. Yes. You are correct. I skipped some things, but tell me a problem that you'd like to talk about. What? Just give me an exact problem, like this to the that. It's the one that's A over B to the N. To the N. Okay, cool. That one I skipped over. 
I probably shouldn't have because it seems easy to me, but I don't know if it's easy to everybody. You just put them both to that power. So I'm glad you brought that up. Yep, when that, when that happens, each of them gets put to the power. So like if I had four fifths and I squared it, they each get squared, like 16 and 25. Von Smith, does that make sense to you? All right, good. So back over here, a to the negative n. Well, it's got to be a to the something. And the negative means 1 over. And can I just ignore the n? No. I got to know what the n is. It's to the n. So it's still got the flip going with the 1 over, but you can't just ignore that there was a number there. The n was a number, and then we put it there. Do you get why it's 1 over? Because it's negative. But then there's also a power here, and that goes there. Why don't we put the 1 to that power? Because it won't matter. 1 to a power stays as 1. So let's see if you really caught that. What if I had 5 to the negative second power? Do you get it involves flipping? But it also involves squaring. Correct. Because you have to flip it because of the negative, and you have to square it because that's what the little do means, squared. All right, so how about negative one-half power? Can you put that together? 25 to the negative one-half. Don't say it this time. Think it. Figure out what you think it is. And please, your answer is a fraction. Show it to the kid next to you. See if you got the same thing. All right. Did you know that the one half part meant square root of, and therefore five? What does the negative mean? Flip or one over. One fifth. Raise your hand if you had one fifth. Cool. Question. What would we do if it was like one over a to the one over a to the negative n? All right. Good question. We haven't come to those yet, but I'll I'll do it right now. I'm going to do one like it. I'm going to tell you a story that helps me understand this. My dad used to live in a condo that had two floors. He, has, he was very old, and he passed away after living a very good life, so it's okay. Uh, and, and he lived a nice, long life. But when he was in Florida and he had this condo, he always talked about he was on the ground floor. He was down here. And he was happy because he didn't want to be on that upper floor. When you're old, do you get walking up the stairs is kind of hard especially when you get to be like 85. It's really hard to get up the stairs. So he was glad he was on the bottom level because these people, they had to go upstairs to get to their condom. But there's people that live on the bottom floor who are younger, believe me, I'm getting the math, that are unhappy. Do you get their negative? Why are the people on the bottom floor that are younger unhappy? Because they wish they were on the top floor. Why? What's better about the top floor? Two things. You get a better view and you get better, like if there's a breeze, especially in Florida, it gets really hot, right? And so a nice breeze is nice and you go up higher, you get a better breeze. In fact, I can empirically say that on average, most people prefer the higher floors. If you go to like Miami, every floor you go up, it costs you like another $20,000 for the condo. Each floor you go up, another 20 grand more. Another floor up, another 20 grand more. Why? Because you get the awesome view. If you get up like the 10th floor, you can see out over the ocean and you can see lots of cool things from your condo. What's considered the best place in the whole building? Penthouse, Penthouse which is where? Wow. The top, the very top. So those, not only another 20, it's probably another 100 grand more for that or probably even way more than that because they make those penthouse units really nice. So my point is that these people that are here wish that they were up here and if they were 
then they wouldn't be negative about it anymore. Do you get how you can take one that has a negative power and move it to the other side? See, now he's happy. Could there be people on the top floor that are negative about life? Yeah, because they're old and they're like, dang, I wish I was on that bottom floor. I wouldn't have to climb the stairs every day with a bag full of groceries. So they want to go down and they would go down here and they'd go join up with the other X's because they're all X's. And this would become X to the fourth down here because it was negative up there, but it's positive down here. And then they can join up and make X to the sixth down in the basement, the lower level. Okay, so the moral of the story is when you have a negative and it's on and a fraction, you can just move it to the other side of the fraction. So you asked me originally about that. Do you get this guy's not happy where he is? So I'm going to move him up here, and he'll be A. You could say times 1, but we know what that does. To the end. And now he's not in the denominator, and he's not unhappy anymore. One last thing you might not know about negative exponents is that you're not allowed to leave them in your answer. If you just wrote an answer that has negative exponents in it, it's considered not simplified. Negative exponents are a thing, but you can't leave them in your answer. So if you came out with an answer of like a x to the negative 2, you done screwed up. You can't leave it that way. So you'd go, you can always make something into a fraction. Do do, And then you'd make these guys go down where they'd be happier. Down here. And now they're x to the positive 2. And that's how you leave your answer. 9 over x squared or 1x squared. The 1 doesn't really matter. Does that make sense to you? Or an A, I guess that was an A on the top, not a 9. I just read it wrong. So have positive answers in your exponents. You can't leave answers with negative exponents in them. All right, that was a very good question. Now let's go to this. This page, I think we're on page 8. I can just do this really quick. X to the what? Fifth. It was either fifth or sixth. Fifth. See, we're already still double, double, you know, like not, not sure. What if I do this? I bet you if I do this, you'll all know what the answer is. It is five. Yep. So if you get stuck, which happened, there's a lot of bright kids in here. We're in an honors class. And yet still people thought it was the other thing. I get it. Just write it out quick and then you'll know. All right, here's a really common thing. People think that this is like a little tribe and this is a little tribe and you can't put them together. No, you can put it all together. The two times the five can make 10. X's can go together and that makes X to the what? Fifth. If you wrote it out as exploded view, two XXX times five XX. And then yeah, that's 10 X to the fifth. That exploded view thing really does work nice. If you're ever stuck, on a test especially, I know it takes extra time, but on a test you might, I better make sure I did this right. Write out the exploded view. You don't need the exploded view here, it's just x to the 12th. But if you're like, I can't remember, do I add? Well, just do part of it as exploded view. And then you'll go three of them, but then I gotta do it four times. Oh yeah, that's 12, that's multiply, not add. Okay, I think we've covered this stuff well enough that we can go on to this bright green page. Be on the great bright green page right now. And please turn your iPads my way. Okay, thank you. Now, would you please answer six and seven leaving no negative exponents and compare them with the kid next to you. My favorite saying is if you can factor it, you should. It applies to the 27 and the 18. If you factor those, then stuff will cancel really nice. Wait till they're done. Wait till you're both done and then compare. All right, that part's one. And do I have to write the one? No. One B to the fifth is the same as B to the fifth. And I can't leave that C as a negative exponent. So you create a fraction 
and you put the C down there where it's going to be happy and not negative. Raise your hand if you had that one right. Okay, good. This next one, 27 is nine times three, and 18 is six times three, but there would have been something smarter to factor that into, because otherwise I'm gonna have a nine sixths in my answer, and that can reduce. I could have factored the nine out, nine times three and nine times two, I agree. Just a second here. So that would have been much smarter because then that cancels and I have a three over a two. Notice life always comes back to factoring. No, not life, but math so often comes down to factoring. Okay, I could write these X's all out and then you'd realize that there was five left on the bottom after it canceled. So I'm just going to go right to that. There's five of them left on the bottom after they cancel. If you really need me to, I can go like this. Nope, watch. Do you get that there's three of them on the top and there's eight of them on the bottom? Cancel, cancel, cancel. Do those X's look negative? Nope. All right. And now the Y's, there's five of them on the top, one of them on the bottom, so one of them cancels. It's Y to the fourth on the top. And last is the Z's. If you do this as one minus four, I get you're thinking Z to the negative fourth, but then you can't leave the Z to the negative fourth on the top. You have to bring it to the bottom and it'll be Z to the fourth on the bottom. Process that. Oh, it is to the third. It's not to the fourth. I did my where to put it correctly, but I did not actually subtract them. My bad. So if I would have actually written it out, I probably wouldn't have messed it up. Z, 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 Z. And then I would go cancel, cancel, and that's Z to the third on the bottom. Okay, there's your final answer on that. And that's kind of what your homework looks like is a ton of those. So let's get to it. Find your homework. Open it up. We're going to cross off a whole bunch of them because I don't like busy work. These uh, go really fast, though, so I'm not going to, like, take them. I'm not going to cut the assignment in half. You'll still finish, probably even during the class hour. But I'm going to have you skip problems 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and 20. Those are the skips. So let's start with numero uno. Look at the list of skips. All right. So, Tate, would you read me number one, please? To the fourth, do you mean? Ah, okay, like this? Yeah. All right. So first off, uh, I can do the power first, and I multiply on this kind, but I can't leave my answer as x to the negative 8, x to the uh, negative 12. I mean, that's not illegal, but I can't leave it that way. The next thing I can do is put them together, and that's x to the negative 20, but I can't leave it that way. So what's the final answer? Why can't I just leave it as x to the negative 20? Yes? Put the one on the bottom and then? And can I just leave it like this then? Or what? Now I gotta move it down. Very good. So final answer? One over x to the 20. You can't leave negative exponents in your answers. So I have to leave it like this blue one. All right. You have a whole bunch of time. You have kids right next to you that you can check with. I encourage you to do that. And don't forget to skip 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and 20. That's all I got for you for today.